from Los Angeles, California. Welcome to CG Society. I'm your host, Travis Warbo, and today we're joined by Andre Wallen, concept artist and director and all around good guy. Um, as a moderator, it's often my responsibility to act as if I don't know the artist and ask questions for the first time. But of course, I've known all these guys for years. And uh, Andre, it's great to have you here. And I want to share with the audience really quickly the uh, the pleasure of taking you around to studios here when you are in the states visiting LA. Um, if if you meet Andre, <laughs> if you meet Andre for the first time, you're pretty tall, a good six foot three, I think. What? How how tall are you? Would you say? Um, yeah, I think that's about right. Uh, I only know the uh, uh, the metric system, so it you would only be know the one. Smart measurements. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, that sounds about right, yeah. So if, if you're joining the dating service show today, um, as we take Andre around <laughs> to different studios, uh, it's always funny to introduce him to people because you're such a humble guy. You're a really nice guy and, and you're super humble, but I don't think that there's anyone in the industry as far as concept art and, and working in film these days that don't know, that's not familiar with the library of your work. And uh, I always introduce Andre to people as we're walking around the studio. And then, of course, five minutes later or later in that evening, somebody comes up to me and whispers, like, is that, is that Andre Wallen? Like, his work is fucking brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a lot of fun seeing when, when people can spread cheer through their art alone. So I'm really happy to have you with us here today. And uh, I know how busy you are, so we'll try to keep it short as, as possible. But um, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So let's get started and kind of talk about um, what's important. What are some of the things that you're working on uh, now that you can talk about? Um, how did you kind of get started out and, and end up on the path that you're on now? Um, give us a, a summary or the, the buzz of who you are and where you came from. Um, all right. I, I think I've bored some of the uh, <laughs> audience with the with the my backstory uh, so, uh, num on numerous occasions, but um, I'll try to keep it brief. Uh, I started out in um, 2008 uh, working prof uh, professionally, um, and but I found out about Photoshop uh, around 2001. Before that, I'd just been traditional pen and paper um, amateur enthusiast, um, just drawing my own little comics and such. Um, and only, yeah, I, I think it was um, around 2001 where I found out about Photoshop and uh, fiddled around with that for an few years before I found out about uh, this new invention called a Wacom tablet. So I um, uh, immediately got hooked on that and uh, yeah, and then around 2007, 2008, that's when I got my first um, freelance uh, job as a concept artist in, in the UK uh, at a studio called Real Time. And then I worked there for a year and then got contacted by the company that was going to do the Oblivion graphic novel. Um, so I moved back to Sweden in 2009 and started working on that, the graphic novel that, that um, ultimately never got released, but turned into a, a feature film um, that you may have seen. Um, yeah, that was uh, beautiful work. Yeah, I thanks. Remember, I remember seeing that at a studio when it was in the pitch phase, and I think it was the character at the bottom of the waterfall. And uh, <clears throat> I'll try to find that picture here if it's here. Um, but I just remember saying, man, wow, that's amazing. Who's that? And they're like, oh, it's this kid, Andre Wallen. <laughs> <laughs> Back when I was still a kid. Right? Uh, <laughs> um. Yeah, no, that was definitely. Um, I couldn't have asked for a better, for a better. Um, what would you call it? Like a better f uh, first step into the film industry because it was such a slow. Uh, bur you know, it was um, a very organic uh, 
process, but it was drawn out over you know, four years or something. Really? So, yeah, it was because I started in 2009 and I, I wrapped it up that the last, you know, I did the, 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 the uh, graphic novel and then I did pre-production and then I did post-production and then I did marketing uh, art. Um, not even, I mean, I, I, I did the, the posters, um, obviously they're, they're on my website, but I also did, <laughs> I, I, I went so far as to do the, um, like uh, covers for some Comic Con gift bag, uh, some <laughs> some weird like Blu-ray edition for you know the, these um, <laughs> smaller territories overseas, and um, I can't even remember all the stuff I did for it. But but yeah, I wrapped it up in late 2013. So yeah, it was a good good four year run. Um, but obviously, with some stuff, some other projects sprinkled in over those four years, but it was pretty insane. Um, but yeah, they, it's as far as um, film work goes, that 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 would be the uh, well, in my opinion, the best way to sort of get started because it's. Um, it wasn't as I was. It wasn't like I was thrown into a, like a massive. Um, and, you know, massively stressful pre-production on a on a big feature where I didn't know anybody because I was the first right. person on the job. You know, every step of the way felt quite uh, quite organic and and uh, and um, easily okay. digested. So anyway, um, yeah. So just to to, to wrap it up, um, I um, then uh, did my own little project. Uh, as soon as uh, um, Oblivion was done, I pitched my own little project that that I ended up selling to Warner Brothers, which sort of started this uh, uh, this this little uh, side path of uh, trying to explore <clears throat> uh, IP creation and, and uh, developing uh, my own projects. Uh, so I did that sort of parallel to to all my uh, other commitments, uh, my client commitments over the, uh, the the years that followed. So that was in 2013. And then the uh, production designer from Oblivion, Darren Guilford, um, hired me on uh, Star Wars um, Episode Seven. Darren's And amazing. then, yeah, Darren's, yeah, I love Darren. Um, he's, he's, uh, he's got an insane eye. Like I, I've gotten so much credit for the, um, the Oblivion art that I've done um, and and it's opened a lot of doors for me, but but I I haven't really given Darren credit enough because he was there to to art direct those pieces in a, in a major way. Like I learned so much from him, him and Joe um, Joe Kosinski, the the director. Uh, they're both you know both um, schooled in 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 production. Uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, like um, uh, they're. I'm gonna... they're I'm going to date Darren a little just to give people context that may not be listening or aware of who he is. But, um, you know, obviously, as you say, he's a production designer and an amazing production designer. But yeah. one, of, one of the facts I love about Darren is that he worked on that creepy game Parasite Eve, which was pretty amazing back in the day. <laughs> and that only, that only dates Darren a little bit. It dates me. <laughs> um, but anybody that played that game, it was definitely you know ahead of its time. And uh, I only say it's I've never even heard of that. Oh, you got to go check out Parasite Eve. There's a creepy baby scene that has like octagon, like octopus legs. Um, <laughs> but uh, when people mention oh, it, I think of the beautiful art of Oblivion and the stuff that you guys do with him. But I also think that it's cool that he's has so much mileage in the industry that you know he was doing Parasite Eve when I was playing before I even knew what this industry was. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he uh, he did some stuff for Avatar, like you know, 15 years ago or something like that. Like he he was one of the first artists who actually did a, a design for for Avatar way way back when Cameron was um, uh, before Cameron realized that that he was a little before his time, uh, or that but before his time, but but the Avatar were, was um, uh, you know not quite there yet, you know, technically. Right. Uh, speaking. So uh, before Cameron decided to push it, um, you know, almost a, a decade, 
uh, into the future. The Darren was there to design some some stuff for that. So uh, yeah, there's there's uh, he's he's done tons of uh, 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 cool stuff like that uh, over the years. Now you uh, mentioned. And, and, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 no. It's uh, enough. <laughs> I've, I've I've kissed his ass enough. <laughs> uh, he's, he's not listening. So. <laughs> This is Andre Walden, not Darren Gilfer, right? <laughs> uh, so one of the previous episodes, we talked about the role that luck plays for for most of the artists that I'm familiar with. Um, you know, mm -hmm. if I if I hear one more artist say, I always knew I wanted to be an artist when I was a little kid, I drew a lot, I'm gonna go crazy. Um, <laughs> but there's, there seems to always be that moment of luck somewhere along the line for everybody where you have to be prepared for it. You have to do the work. The hard work has to be there, has to be present. But you kind of have an interesting story just going backwards slightly to the fact of um, one of the places you were kind of discovered was on the Saijun forums, which, you know, I was using the Saijun forums in 2001, 2002 with friends mm -hmm. like David Levy and, and Sparth. Um, you know, that speed painting thread is uh, yeah. st still a holy grail. But in 2001, 2002, we were leaving, like, thinking 2003, maybe, we were leaving thinking, like, yeah, the site's old and it's dead, but, you know, the speed th painting threads is amazing. And then I talked to you, you know, 2009, 2010, and uh, find out, mm -hmm. you, know, like, where, you know, how did you get your start? And you're like, oh, on the Saijon forums. <laughs> <laughs> And and I'm like, what? I'm like, I don't remember your work there. And it's like, yeah, around 2007. I'm like, you're on this forums in 2007. What? So, <laughs> like, you, what was your moment of luck? Was that one of the, your moments of luck, or and, you know, with your IP? Your IP clearly is hard work. But do you have any defining moments that you could look back on and say, I was lucky and I was at the right place and right time? And you know, this is a point I can recall. Um, I don't know. I. I uh... I know that luck. I mean, it's a. Uh, it, uh, it depends on how you define luck, I guess. Uh, because luck, to me, I, I would like to take a step back and and and, and uh, have a um, or do more of a a bigger picture sure. uh, perspective on that. Because I, I I would say that I am I was lucky genetically to 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 I, I was genetically predisposed or, or, or whatever that word is to to uh, have a a passion or, or, or a, um, well, yeah, I, I guess a, a passion or an addiction. Yeah. Um, for, for, uh, being creative and, 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 um, you know, uh, having that, that drive to just sit down for hours and, and just paint that, that I guess. And then that, that's the, it's the same for, for every artist really. And, and what, what, dif you know, what, what varies, um, on an individual level is, you know, how badly you want to do it. Um, because you, you know, I always tend to, to, to say that, oh, all you need to do is practice whenever people wonder about, you know, or ask me about, um, you know, how to take the, um, uh, how to step up their game and, and take it to the next level. And, and I, I, you know, if you have to ask that question, Maybe you haven't really figured it out yet because the, it's only it should be built it, sh, it should be all, already within you the, this drive to to um, to to just work your ass off and, and just spend every waking uh, waking minute uh, doing it at least for the first few years. Um, and and you can still ask that question during that those first few years. And I sure as hell did. But um, the the answer will come to you um, as you go along. You know the 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 the, the limitations of, of what you're able to pull off as an artist or or how to take it to the next level and and all those all those questions that you might have. Uh, it will become apparent to you uh, after a while. Because if you if you spend a lot of time drawing, you will progress, and you will eventually, you know, see that 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 um, progression. Uh, you can look back and see that progression, and and sort of see your trajectory. Um, and you won't have you, you you won't have the need to have anyone explain it to you. Um, but that being said, obviously, I, I do realize the importance of 
of uh, of being able to ask that question and and, and sometimes having a, someone answer it for you for, for or not not answer it for you but but have something uh, for the for the moment where you might be struggling with something or you feel like you've hit a wall and or or you've hit your limitation as an artist and you don't know how to progress and maybe sometimes for, you know that that's completely individual as well but uh sometimes some people maybe need a word of encouragement from someone uh or just you know uh they need something from someone that they are not able to obtain themselves right. uh, to, 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 to take that next step. But, um, but I think all in all, yeah, it should be, it should be already there within you. You should want to, you know, if you don't want to sit, if you don't want to spend your day be, being creative, then you do have a, <laughs> A fundamental problem like if you want to be an accomplished artist but you don't want to do the the homework so to speak or, or you don't want to go the uh, you don't want to practice you just, you just want to be there already then i would reconsider or at least uh, uh not reconsider but i would i would um have to reevaluate uh who i want to be uh professionally and and um in life right. Uh, in general, because it's um, and it's not, it might sound a bit harsh, but I think that's the, the, the that's the simple truth. Uh, yeah, in this industry, there are no hours, there are no weekends. You have to make it all blend together and find happiness. Uh, yeah. And it's worth it because you know it's a career worth sacrificing for. But you bring up a really good point, and it's a, a point of conflict for myself. Um, and we all have this conversation quite frequently. You and I have had this conversation before, which is, you know, if an artist doesn't do the homework, if an artist isn't, you know, somewhat addicted, I think addiction is actually a pretty good word. Passion's a great word, but so is addiction. Because, yes. <clears throat> you know, if, if you're the type of person that's going to be very successful, if you're the type of person that's going to grow a lot, you're going to probably be the type of person that has trouble with relationships in life. Um, and I only mean that, you yeah. know, it sounds derogatory. Yeah. But I mean that from the point of view that if you're an artist, if, if you want to be a really good artist, it, you may not be a, a selfish person or you may not see yourself as a selfish person, but it demands that you spend a lot of time in your head and it demands that you continuously feed it and that you continuously are doing it. And yeah. that that demand, as you mentioned, needs to be uh, an addiction. It needs to be a passion rather than a chore, because if it's a chore, you'll get good enough to get a job. And, you know, and that's where I would say 60 percent of the industry comes from is people that get mm. good enough to get the job. And, and you know, there's yeah. 1800 studios in L.A. You know, there's only 30 character artists in, in games that, you know, have a, a very big name. Why is that? Well, there's not a lot of positions, but there's still a lot of studios. And it's those yeah. artists that are constantly pursuing it, constantly addicted, constantly good. And if you're just good enough to get in the door or if you just push yourself hard enough to get into the door, then you're going to have trouble later on because you might do great on that first job. But if you get distracted and there's other passions in your life that either take hold or you're not able to sustain the workload it takes to to pretend, so to speak, to be passionate or to be misinformed, misinforming yourself on being passionate. It, it can get tough. So I think I think it's good that you you present it and put it out that way because it goes back to if a student or if an artist isn't pushing and they're constantly asking the same questions, they're not taking the information and growing with that, how much more should we continue to push those people versus just let them fail? Because you don't want yeah. that person to get into the art department with you because then that makes it tough on everyone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a big believer in uh, natural selection, uh, and and uh, you know, <laughs> people need to uh, yeah, it it should it should be easy. Uh, it should be at the end of the day, it should be a fairly easy question to answer. Uh, like, are you devoted and and passionate and obsessed and and addicted enough? Then you know, th th there's there's there really is no question. Then uh, you'll you'll be an, an artist and, and probably a, a good one. Um, but on the other hand, you could you could flip it around and, and ask yourself, well, is it healthy? Is it is it what you want to be? 
Like, do you, would you want to, you know, if you feel like you're lacking that drive, if you feel like you're lacking that addiction and, and, um, and obsession, because obsession is also uh, a word that, that, that is uh, relevant. Um, if you're lacking that, uh, then do you, do you really want it? <laughs> because it comes at a price. It, it, like you said, you have to be a fucking narcissist and, and a complete um, self-absorbed, you know, uh, not very highly functioning uh, normal person um, or abnormal person um, to to, yeah. to get them, especially those first few years in the industry. Like, man, I was neglecting just about everyone uh, and everything in my life. Uh, and and it, it came at a price. So you have to ask yourself if it's worth it, because so, some people might might look at that or hear that and, and, and go, well, that doesn't sound very appealing. You know, I, I just watched the um, I've been uh, speaking of obsession the last few days. Uh, I've been watching this, um, uh, the, these um, Avicii documentaries. I don't know if you know about this artist who, who um, yeah, uh, yeah, he killed himself, uh, which is just fucking just such a tragedy. And, and I was watching that documentary and it really struck a chord with me because he was uh, he expressed that in that documentary, he you know, on the surface is, is this guy 28 years old and he's got everything, you know, he has a, a right. big mansion in the hills. He's got places all over, the, all over the world. He stopped touring. He could do whatever he wanted. And his obsession, you know, became his downfall. And, and when, when I, when I looked at the documentary, I could, I could see, you know, traces of myself in there, but not, not, not as extreme, but this, you know, this sort of, um, you can see the earmark of it coming your way. Yes. Yes. And, and you can see it in his eyes and, 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 uh, I guess that's why it really, um, it felt, it felt quite close to home, uh, watching that. Uh, and it, it was heartbreaking, but, but seeing that, that's that type of addiction, it was, um, almost as if someone was holding up a mirror uh, in a in a sense, but not you know. Obviously, he took it to a, a completely different uh, level, and 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 um, and it, I mean, he was at the very top when when he uh, when he um, passed away. But 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 it was uh, you know that it it made myself uh, ask myself that question. You know, is is it all worth it? Because Right. Not only am I now working on on these um, these features, um, you know, I've, I've been working on films for a number of years, but um, I'm also, uh, as, as you're aware, um, uh, developing my own project. Right. And and we are making some uh, progress on that, and 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 I, I think if all goes if it all goes as as, as planned, it, it'll you know. If, turn my life upside down and I, I think you know if, I want to ask those questions sooner rather than later um, you know am I willing to, to really uh, make that sacrifice and and, and, and w will I be able to handle it if it ha were to happen because I have a problem with with uh, that type of creative addiction and obsession I think that so takes some I think that takes some maturity to, you know, that's when I feel like an artist is healthy when you're taking the time while you're going through that to start asking those questions now, right? Not, not later mm -hmm. when they become important. And, you know, you hit a really, really good thing that we don't discuss as often. I mean, you know, in a way I feel like to some extent, like you said, we're, we're kind of making this feel like an unattractive industry, but I think it's important to put the other side out of the, the uncool factor. I mean, you're working with JJ Abrams, you're working with Darren Guilford, you're working with James Conn, you're working with amazing people, you're at the top of your game. But there is, this, there is this reality there that says that, okay, well, now that I'm here, I've got to keep up the pace, I've got to continue to keep putting out hit after hit after hit. If you finish up on Star Wars Rogue One, well, you know, three weeks later, it's what's the next project or, or three weeks before or three months yeah. before, you yeah. know, you're already on two more projects and you don't really get to take that time because, you know, the easy solution to somebody listening to this, the easy solution to somebody who's only been doing this job for a few years is just to say, well, it's about finding balance. It's about getting outside hobbies or taking a break or, 
you know, make sure that you're not giving everything to art. But mm. the reality of where you're at, that's not really a luxury you can afford from my point of view is that, you know, can you afford right now just to be like, okay, I'm going to take six months and I'm just going to do my own project. I'm going to take the time it takes to do it. I'm not going to rush it. I'm not going to worry about whether it's marketable to Netflix. I'm not going to worry <laughs> about what the marketing art looks like or who's on the script or who's doing the music or how I get this or how I fund it. Like, you don't really get a luxury for a lot of the small advice that we hear out there, which is just, just kick back and it right. feeds on you. And, you know, that's where we start to get into that burnout, even at a young age. Um, and I'm not saying that you're anywhere near burnout, but I'm saying it's good to have this conversation and it's good for an artist like you at your point to say, like, I'm really busy and I'm looking and I'm reflecting and I'm asking myself, is it worth it? Because then it's not like you're going to walk away, but you can come up with a game plan. Right. You can start to yeah. say, you can start to ask those questions like, OK, if this happens, you know, if I'm working on this now, if this happens, where does it go? Um, so yeah. I think that's pretty cool for you to share. And it's also, you know, the tougher side of stuff to share, because a lot of artists don't want to share the stuff that's no fun. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's much cooler to be like, yeah, painting Star Destroyers for Rogue One is badass. <laughs> <laughs> versus like i'm kind of lonely man i'm spending a lot of time i've spent like 18 hours a day and i've got a meeting at four o'clock in the morning to like deliver something that i only got to to work on 30 percent, but i wanted it to get to 80. um yeah yeah how how has that been like where where do you build the intelligence where do you build the skill set um you know going from an artist that just loves to paint just loves to draw um, that is passionate, that is addicted or is obsessed with doing the art. How do you develop that skill set to jump in a room or, or jump on a conversation with somebody like DJ Abrams or somebody, you know, that's an artist that you respected? Has that been a skill that you built over time? Did it come naturally? Uh, is it tough? Uh, it's definitely tough <laughs> and it does not come naturally to me. Uh, <laughs> it may come naturally. I'm, I'm, I'm imagining that, that it's less of a problem for you because uh, uh, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I just know, uh, judging from, from what I know uh, of you and your, or, you know, your you know, personality, I, I, I would assume that you have an easier time navigating the sort of politics and, and, and stupid mind games of, of being in a room with people that you may not necessarily want to be with. Would I be correct in assuming that like, like that you you're you know you don't have you, you're not stressed out going into a meeting with a couple of you know oh no I'm I'm always stressed out it's funny I talked to um I talked to Neil Huxley um Neil Huxley's this you know, amazing director yeah. I think we both know Neil right yeah, yeah yeah you know Neil was heading into you know one of the biggest projects he did for that amazing amazing project that you guys are both familiar with and uh. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, you sit down in a room with guys that are they're making $15 million a year and, you know, they're not there to be your buddy. They're just looking at you, you know, <laughs> looking you down. Right. I mean, that's his story. Right. Stuff. But I think I think the thing is, is that, you know, he's somebody who can go into a meeting and he's confident as shit. And I, I tell him I wish I had that. I have people come up to me all the time after, <laughs> I do, after I do presentations or speeches or go into meetings and they're like, it must be nice to have good people skills. I'm like, I hate my voice. I have a terrible vocabulary because I've been in studios for 15, 20 years. And that means I talk like a pirate. Um, <laughs> every time I go into mic, like I'm only doing these and, and it, it's that same thing, right? It's a passion to help people. And it's also just the need to find fellow travelers, right? Um, people, mm -hmm. people like yourself that I just, I'm really interested in your life. I'm really interested in what you do. I'm really interested in your success. And, you know, for two years, I, I partnered up with someone to run some schools just because I didn't want to be the guy in front of the camera. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want to be the guy talking. You know, if I had a button to change my voice right now to sound like somebody else, I absolutely would. But it's putting yourself into that business mode, um, you know, not not an artificial mode. But I do think that you can get strength from believing, you know, if you're in that room and you believe you should be in that room because you believe in the project or you believe in the artist. Like, yeah. like that's where you gain your strength um, that, you know, allows you to stand up and, and not break down and be like, uh, you know, that and the right. fact that, that, you know, I've got a broken nose and crooked teeth, like <laughs> never miss an opportunity <laughs> to make a fool of yourself. Like, I don't want opportunities to pass by. 
Uh, <laughs> well, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's a more healthy attitude then, uh, <laughs> as opposed to being uh, super calm all the time. <laughs> but, but maybe it's I should... Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's caffeine, right? Like just wire yourself up. But, <laughs> but if you were yeah. good, if you weren't good at that, right? If you couldn't hold a conversation with people at that level, if you didn't have the vocabulary or the ability to, to visually communicate, you yeah. don't last, you don't last long. So, you know, it's clearly something that you've developed a skill to do. And, um, you know, yeah, I, I, I uh, you know, th this is where I, where I want to. Uh, all the people that have supported me throughout the years uh, and and enjoyed my my art, I you know I, I owe them uh, all so much. You know, uh, every single person because all of that that um, all of that love and 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 all that support and and uh, all the um, wonderful little comments and and feedback. What that does to you if you have a healthy or, I, well, maybe I'm overstating that, but but that if you have a somewhat healthy um, uh, mind uh, or an intact uh, um, or a healthy ego, I should say, is that it, it builds your confidence. It does. It doesn't overinflate it, but it's it makes you it, it makes you slightly more confident in your um, in your uh, professional role. So when you enter a room, you know that well you're better than this person it doesn't matter how much this uh you know, person uh makes a year or it doesn't matter if a, if it's a studio executive or like a uh, like a high role or if it's the ceo of a, of a studio or, or uh, wherever it may be it might might as well be the guy at the very top it he he's not gonna scare me because i know that i don't need him uh in a sense, like sure, it would be nice if he wants to give me a project or if if he wants to buy my project, but that that's never been my goal in life. That that's it's all just a fucking bonus, you know. Right. I've 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 had regular jobs. I, I know what a regular, real job is, if I may, uh, say that. So, right. uh, what we do here is, um, is not. I mean, it's hard work. Yes, it is. But but it's also we're so fucking privileged, and it cannot be said enough. Um, so and that's how I look at it. You know, I I I no longer am uh, am driven by um, or fueled by you know whatever project is next, or the you know the next film has to be bigger than the, the than than the last one. Uh, right. I couldn't care less. I, I'm, I'm more interested <laughs> in, you know, who's going to pay my bills now, and and will it be a, a pleasant person to work with? So that that's that's the, that, that's the sort of uh, that's my you know uh, employee mindset. When when it comes to my own projects, uh, I am oddly confident and calm entering a room, uh, in the sense that. I don't really give a shit if they want to buy my project or not. Like I, I, I have, I know that it would be good. Right. I know that I could do a good job because I, I, I truly believe in it. Um, and I know that I'm uh, creatively with what I'm doing uh, as an artist. Um, I'm doing something that this person in the in the room that I'm in does not know. She, like he, he doesn't understand or she doesn't understand what the hell I'm doing and she couldn't do my job just as right. I couldn't do their job so it's a sort of mutual on that on, in that sense we're on a mutual platform where that person is dependent on people like me uh, and I'm dependent on people like them right so it, it doesn't really that sort of discrepancy um, in terms of social status or or, or uh, you know in wealth uh, generally speaking um doesn't really register with me um and i've never been driven by uh you know the money or um i, I don't have a monetary sort of uh, incentive to to do this obviously it's nice when you when you when you're able to pay bills <laughs> Right. Uh, to, to you know, doing what you love uh, at the end of the day, but 
but yeah, I, I truly look at it as a, as a huge uh, bonus and, and a weird sort of uh, a weird uh, little privileged journey that I'm on that I'm actually allowed to be here talking about my project. And I'm, I'm only there for one reason, and that is because I believe in my project. I know it would be good. If you don't have that, if you don't believe in your project or you're not sure it would be good, then you have nothing to to gain from from it, and and you will be nervous and and almost you know pass out from anxiety. But but um, if you, you if you tr yeah. truly believe in your project, then then it's it's no problem at all. It gives you the confidence, right? And, and you yes. bring up a, a really great tool in saying that you know look that guy that makes fifteen million dollars a year. You know, if you were to walk in that room and start talking about the dollar and finance, it's going to be a short conversation, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like if, if you flip that role, like like you said, like you know, you have a role. You're 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 filling a you know piece of that puzzle. Without you, there's a lack of success. So, I think that that's a great way to have confidence. And you know, there's people all the time. Like I love people like yourself that that are super humble. But as you said. You know, just like I'm able to turn on and, and put myself into business mode and, and yeah. play a role, right? <laughs> like, you know, you're able to do that and, and you have to. Like one of the things that I talk to, you know, more senior artists about all the time that are humble is that there's a level of, I don't know if ego is the right word, but there's a level of, especially in L.A., having to put yourself in the, the cards of what you've done on the table. I, I remember having a meeting with uh a really successful artist. Um, you've, you've met this artist before, but uh, this artist came to a business meeting at a previous company and it was about, you know, just starting up a little side project together. And when we were in this meeting, the artist from the previous company was kind of giving artist A that came in for the meeting, the general mm -hmm. walkthrough of like, this is what we do. And, and it was like giving, it was like giving a tour to students from a local college. And right. so, you know, he got up from the table, went to the restroom and I looked over at the, my friend and I said, look, you've been doing this for 20 years. You work with Andrew Stanton. You work with Steven Spielberg. I was like, you have got to let this guy know what it is that you do, because he's unfamiliar with you. He's unfamiliar with your art and he's giving you the like dying tour that he's going to give everybody. And when he comes back, if you don't put your cards at the table, not to say like, I'm amazing or, you know, look at me look at what I've done. But as like, if you don't let him know that you're at his level, then I, we're not going to get anywhere. And, and that's exactly what happened is, you know, as soon as the person came back, he, he luckily time wise pulled up a piece from a, a movie that the artist I was with had been actually producing with the, the director. And he goes, yeah, he goes, I actually developed that piece, right? Like we, we took that piece all the way through kind of the build. And as soon as he said that, uh, as soon as he said that, it turned from the dime tour to, oh, well, I didn't realize that. Let me put this away and let's show you some of the secret stuff, right? <laughs> like, let's show right. you the good. Let's show you the good stuff we're working on. And and that's where it's important, not necessarily for students that are just getting their first job, but I think we always talk about students. We always talk about getting the job. We always talk about getting into the industry. But there's so much that's been left undiscussed once you're established in the industry. And so, you know, there is a bit of this is who I am and this is what I provide for you and this is why I'm good at it. And I think that that can be done in a way that's not cocky and it can be done in a way that's not egotistical, but it is a necessity in the beginning of relationships to kind of establish who you are and what it is that you're useful for, because those people will only see you as a tool and, and they're not going to typically, you know, they're not going to care about you too much. They're not going to care who you are, what you do. They, they need to know what you do, what you're good at, and how that is a profitable you know, relationship to them. Yeah. Uh, so I think I think it's great for you to bring up a lot of topics that you're hitting on today. This is this is the stuff that I really want to do these for is is to have these deeper level conversations. I think. Well, it's yeah, it's it's fun to talk about it because uh, uh, it wasn't until I did the. Um, my, my my class um, f for you um, last year that that I actually um, had to verbalize some of these uh, mindset the, the, the verbalize this mindset and and some of these ideas and and it, it isn't until you put it into words that you actually understand what's going on uh, which is a, a, a bizarre thing in life but sometimes you need to put it into writing or you need to 
say it out loud to really process what the hell's going on. So if you, if you have a problem in life, then that's, that goes for everything, man. It's, it's not only creative uh, challenges, but just about anything in life that you're struggling with, if you actually write it down and, and, and read it through, or you say it out loud, you, you, you say it to a, a friend or a, I don't know, a therapist or whatever, um, you'll process it in a completely different way. It's, it's almost as if you're activating, you know, your logical, um, you know, the logical uh, side of your brain uh, right. and, and they start to sort of work in unison to, to, uh, to, to figure out the problem. Um, and it's, it's quite beneficial uh, at the end of the day because it's, you, you'll grow as an artist and as a person. Um, so that, that's really something that I can recommend. Uh, and I've done that with, with plenty of, uh, not, not only creative challenges, but, but just um, life, um, life in general. When, whenever I've hit a speed bump, um, I've tried to, to uh, write it down and, and work it out that way. And it's, um, um, yeah, it's a, it's a useful little thing. Yeah, I mean, taking as you said, you know, when you teach, you you're you're finding ways that <clears throat> uh, of defining the things that you do intuitively, right? And it's almost yeah. like almost like writing down notes. I look back at the notes that I took from you know 2005, 2007. There was a color theory uh, workshop that Vance Kovacs did for me that was just brilliant. And uh, at the time, I just took you know 15 pages of notes, and and it, I was never a person that took notes before, and. Mm -hmm. uh, it was that workshop that really taught me to take notes because now I look back at those notes and there's things that I didn't understand at the time, but thankfully I took notes and now I'm like, Oh, now I get this. Now I, now I understand it. So, you know, for me, as you know, like the reason why I have classes, the reason why I work with different artists is, you know, I want to continue the relationship that I have. And, and this is one of the ways that we can work together and then help each other grow and, and stay in touch for other projects. And so, you know, yeah. when, when I have people teach, it's also, it's a really interesting look inside the artist as well, because, you know, for you, I discovered how good of an art director you are almost instantaneously, like the way that you're able to critique different people's work and just open it up and like instantaneously, like within a second, be like, oh, you just need to change this here. And if you change this here, everything comes together. And I'm just like, shit, how did he see that? Like, I see it, but it would have took me five minutes and, and like just <laughs> watching watching how developed your eye was at a young age, um, I, I think was hugely rewarding. But I don't want to keep you you talking too long today. I know you're super busy. So, um, let's let's just take a look at a few of your images if you want to just break down one or two of your images and then we'll jump in and take a look at a few student examples um, or a few right. entries to the gallery if that's cool. Yeah. Um, and you know, thanks for opening up and, and you know talking about your personal life with us. Um, I think these days, you know, I've done hundreds of interviews. I've been doing them since 2001. And, you know, every interview was always mostly for somebody else for marketing. And as you know, these are the conversations we have when we're off air. And yeah. I'd love to have more of these conversations on air these days because I think it's the thing that's missing the most. Um, it's not, you know, self-promotion or, or braggadocio. <laughs> it's... Uh, <laughs> It's needed information. So thank you for, for opening up with that, man. Um, yeah, my pleasure, man. So let's take a look at your gallery. And is there any specific image that you want to kind of talk on and, and just break down for these images? Is your pipeline still the same? How much 3D are you using these days? How much uh, photo bashing are you doing? Does it matter? Um, <laughs> you know, is, it just, <laughs> is it just the best tool to get jobs done or you know, working on projects like Star Wars and other projects? Whether they, how are they expecting you to work? Um, yeah, well, I've had the same process now for the the, the past seven or eight years, I would say. Um, I mean, I'm never leaving Photoshop CS3, that's for sure. Um, I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I've, I've, I've tried to, I, I actually did with, with my on, online, uh, online class, I had to do CC a couple of times just because the, the, for, for whatever reason, the stream wasn't working on CS3 and it was just painful, man. I, I fucking hate every other, <laughs> uh, 
version of Photoshop. So I can only that, that's that's my one little quirk I would say. Um, and but what that does is allow it it allows me to just keep on shamelessly uh, photo bashing uh, and cobbling together my 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 at least the, the I would say the foundation of a of a painting without being distracted by too many fancy ways of you know building it in whatever you know uh, 3d hybrid uh, plug-in feature bullshit that that the newer <laughs> Photoshop versions has um, I couldn't care less about that stuff um, and it, what, yeah so, so what that does is is keeps me it keeps me uh, un uh, it keeps me focused on on just whatever it is that, that I'm doing at the moment and more often than not, it's, it's only about, uh, for me, it's only about um, photo bashing something together super quick because um, sometimes, you know, you, you, you have, just the other day I had a two hour deadline to, 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 to do a pretty big um, revision of, uh, I was sent someone's work that, for, for that, that, that needed to be revised for this meeting uh for star wars and i had two hours to fix it and that's 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 when it comes in handy that that that's really where it comes in handy so right. but but on the other hand you know that that's not i, I don't want to paint a picture where where you only have two hours to finish your paintings uh, on a movie uh it's just what what the uh, you know people people just know um if you're on if if you're on a, a, a movie you know the people you're working with the people they right. know you they know your limitations they know what to throw at you and what not to throw at you so um it's it's pretty i mean it's pretty individual um it's a, a case by case sort of basis um so so in that sense i I don't want. I, I I I just want to be careful and not give people the wrong impression or or to, uh, you know. You're good uh, at that. you're good at giving the wrong impression though. I mean, I literally was just talking with one of my partners here at CG Society before we began, and and I said I said my only disappointment with um, Andre's first class was I was like his stuff somehow looks you know looks pretty painterly still. And I was like, it's amazing. His eye is just so good that he's able to go in and pop open curves and get like 60% of the image like painterly looking. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I'm looking at it. And, you know, I remember having, I remember talking to, to Charlie Wynn when I first saw, saw your work. And, you know, Charlie, Charlie paints the hell out of stuff. And I remember telling Charlie, I'm like, his work just, you know, he, it's unbelievable how he paints all of this. And Charlie's like, are you sure it's not photo fashion? It looks really good. He goes, but I can't tell either. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, but, but your eye, like I said, your eyes developed enough that, you know, you can pull that off. You can go in and you know how to adjust it. You know what you need to do. And, and man, for production, you're a very cost effective artist. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I know I'm not the most, uh, you know, I, I'm i not the cheapest artist, you know, it, it, it will cost you to keep me on a big production, <laughs> but right. I do know <laughs> that I'm uh, cost um, effective, like you said, because I do, I, I've found this way to crank out stuff in a fairly uh, limited amount of time, uh, and that that truly that 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 comes from the CGN days, man. We can we can right. circle back to that and or rather come full circle, um, because that's that's when I and and myself and a lot of other artists obviously um, really um, figured out a way to put nice put time. these nicely you know polished finished pieces together in a, in a super short amount of time and and it's uh it, it comes in quite handy to, even to this day so um and that's that's why i think if what, what um if we want to go back to your nice compliment about my my art direction um it it, it sort of um, ties into that as well because the quicker you uh your eye uh, is to to figure out a composition um 
the faster you will be both as an artist, as, as a, concept, a concept artist and as a uh, art director, because you will see instantly uh, what is wrong with a picture and, and, or, or a composition. And that, 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 that's pretty important. And uh, that I feel that that is what people are lacking Right. Uh, these days, uh, or at least some some people. I mean, there there there's so many good artists. Uh, so I don't want, want to get, do sound think, like I'm. No problem. Do you think you that getting on projects early helps you develop that eye by being put into a situation where you have to make choices faster? Um, and then yeah. on top of that, you know, how how over the years has you know you've been using the same pipeline for seven years, so to speak. Um, have you gotten a lot faster because of that mileage and because of those deadlines? Does, does the deadlines have an effect? Yeah, uh, they, they do. Um, I, I would say that that it's uh, one of the main reasons why you do become, I, I mean, I was pretty fast when I started to freelance, but it's not until you're working for a client that, yeah, that you really figure out if you're fast enough or not. <laughs> Uh, and you can you can be you can be fast with your personal art, but but it's a it's a different game to be fast when you're working for a client because it's it's scary to send stuff uh, that that you feel is not quite there yet and that you've only spent a few hours on. It's always you know even to this day I, I'm I don't I don't feel good when I send some some um, you know some piece of concept work that I've only spent spent you know two or three hours on um so you good, have to i think that not to interrupt you but i think that's a good bullet point to hit as well which is that you know how often do you actually get to take something to finish from your point of view uh finish you know versus you know show the director finish versus hand it in finish versus hand it off how often you know like on a piece like this uh, this is probably the wrong piece to use because i know i know a little bit about this but you know, how often do you get to take something 100% versus 50 versus 20? And, and how much time, you know, do you typically get on a piece? It's all over the map, but obviously, you know, if you got an average, so to speak. Um, I would say um, that's really, that's really, yeah, it's hard to say. It's uh, It depends on what you mean by finished, because sometimes I, I'll spend a lot of time right. do, doing, you know, revision after revision. Uh, and, you know, in that process, uh, a painting will get more and more polished because, you know, you have a lot of time to spend on it. On the other hand, you have, you end up with 30 different versions of it. Uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, you were more happy with the initial approach. Uh, and then someone has come in and sort of changed the, uh, the creative, uh, you know, trajectory tra trajectory of it. So uh, it, it's it's quite rare for me to to actually get to finish a piece where I go, well, now I've, I've I've had the luxury now to spend you know three days on this without any bullshit inter interference <laughs> uh, from someone that 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 sort of ruins the the painting. You know, a good example is okay. So you feel like you've finished a painting. Right. Or, or, or a concept and you send it off and the feedback comes back and the feedback is, oh, could you just add this little thing right here? Uh, if you could, <laughs> if you could give me that by the end of the day, uh, that would be fantastic. Thanks, man. And they, what they want to add is, you know, uh, completely like covers 25% of the frame. So it fucks up your composition and all of a sudden the version you had before um, is no longer relevant as a, you know, finished piece that that sort of ties into the to the film. So in that sense, well, maybe half of them is finished or are are finished, but they will then be sort of augmented or revised into versions that I'm no longer <laughs> personally happy with, or have some sort of uh, element in them that right. were done on a tighter deadline. So you know. But if, if you take Star Wars, for example, uh, the, the episode seven, the, the one that you're looking at right now, this was one of the fewer paintings on episode seven that I actually had. There, there were a couple of weeks where there, there, there were a lot of meetings uh, at Pinewood and, and all of the HODs were busy. So um, I could just spend a lot of time um, 
with this one and, and there's a couple of other ones um, that I actually got to take to a, to a place where I was happy, you know, I was actually happy um, personally uh, right. with, with where I ended up. So, um, and this piece is good to jump in on just to say that, you know, while I give you credit for curves or I give 60% credit to curves when I'm joking about you, you know, <laughs> it, it always comes back to, well, you're able to do that because if you give it to you to paint, you can't, you're just using the more effective way to get there. And so, yeah. like, and, and this is a beautiful piece. This is the type of stuff I like to see that's loose. And I, I, I continuously keep representing Harvey Dunn, who's been dead for, you know, 50 years, 100 years, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, but Harvey Dunn's an evening in class, you know, uh, with Harvey Dunn, the critique that's out there. There's no images to it, but, you know, there's all these just beautiful crits that he gave. And, you know, he says when you add interest to an image, you remove interest from it, right? And, you know, somebody comes along and puts their stamp on it, which they have to do. That's production, right? Um, yeah. and, and we're not we're not shitting on that in a way of like, oh, I don't want to work with that person. It's like, no, I enjoy that at work, but it's an artist. The artist side of me dies a little when that happens. Um, <laughs> And, and it's the side of, that also can make production expensive. You know, jokingly, Sony had a project and we were, we were, a group of us were looking at, you know, the past film footage and we were looking at like revision 280. Um, and one of the artists in the room that was looking at the role was like, what does Rev 280 mean? And there, somebody else in the room goes, oh, that means that this is the 280th pass at this piece. Right. Uh, at this, <laughs> yeah. At this animation. And I go, actually, it's like revision six though. And, and, and he's like, no, no, it's, it's Rev 280. It says right there. I go, yeah, but that's because it went, it took, it to, took 276 passes after it was correct for them to come back and say, no, 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 now we like it. Everybody in the room has put their stamp on it. Now we like right. it. Now, now it's done. And, and that is a part of what makes production expensive because, you know, if I'm paying you three more days to go back to an image that probably would have passed. Um, yeah. <laughs> that, that's a cost <laughs> yeah it, you know and, and that that was the, the the main motivation for me when i did state when i did my short film um a few years back uh because we were deal, dealing with a lot of that stuff on, on star wars you know just right. iteration or version after version and it, just never getting any approvals and i was like well maybe i as an artist uh, who is prone to uh, critiquing f films uh, should try to see if I can apply my vision uh, in, in a, from a directing standpoint um, and see if I can sort of streamline the process a bit. Um, obviously, it's a bit naive to think that 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 you're going to be able to master the the art of directing uh, just just because you you know how to paint you know it doesn't really work like that but um i at least got to make a film where uh, we could you know we could approve uh, our designs in a f fairly reasonable uh, uh, time frame um, and it was really nice because we could just go with our first instincts on you know that ship that we had and the vampire designs and all that because I knew straight away that uh, the, you know what this works it doesn't have to be any more or any less than than what we have right here I know that will work for the story when when it, you know and this uh, this is a completely subjective uh, you know personal opinion but I find that that a lot of directors are so and art directors and production designers, they're, they're so, they're focused on the wrong things, you know, that the audience is not sitting there thinking, oh, um, they, they probably should have done 30 or 40 more versions of this ship because uh, <laughs> there's something about this ship that doesn't sit right with me, you know, uh, and because, and, and if you don't have a clear vision in your mind uh, or in your head when you go into production, then you're just going to end up with films that that look, you know, like they're all over the place. And we we all know these films. Um, they're just CG spectacles where there's no sort of coherent design language. Everything is just, you know, crazy over the top. It doesn't feel real. It doesn't. It just. It's just very scattered. It's not very focused. And and that to me, uh, uh, that that's when I just 
think that it's so funny that they go through all of these versions. They spent all of this time and money going through, you know, a thousand versions of something, and and and, and then the movie sucks, <laughs> and 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 you know the, the the whatever design is not there to sort of work with the narrative or or uh, you know it doesn't enhance the story in any any way. So I do think that there's something to be learned from from um, uh, from not overthinking certain design elements. You know where you draw that line, though. That that's right. that that's a different question, and that's a hard question uh, to to um, to to answer in 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 a lot of cases. But uh, you do tough. see some extreme examples when when you work on big films. Right, it's tough because it's a team effort, right? If that movie turns out like crap, it's not you typically one person's fault. It's a, it's a team effort. But yeah, it, it, it occurred to me a long time ago, years ago, that you know when I had the opportunity to work with the first director, you quit very quickly see that one of the strengths of directing is the same as the strength of, of doing art. I mean, it's all an art form, right? But it's yeah. interesting whether it be music, whether it be sports, whether it be you know digital painting, whether it be storytelling, that that ability to very decisively and quickly understand what elements are important and what elements you have to sacrifice. To me, yes. you know, I, I always say with the director, the guy that comes in that's really decisive, even if somebody says that guy's an asshole, if he knows what he wants, like that's pretty amazing. Like being yeah. decisive is, is pretty amazing. And to me, sometimes even more as much as script and not more than script, but as much as script, if you can be decisive and you can understand what elements you need to retain to be able to push the story forward, to be able to get the audience to connect, um, yeah. Then, then you have a successful image. And if you don't, you know, like you know, Oblivion was an example of, man, you know, show me a more beautiful movie than Oblivion. Like it's tough. The opening sequence of Prometheus, like there's some just gorgeous, gorgeous shots. But yeah. if you can't get chemistry between the actors, if, you know, if you, and that's not a director's fault necessarily, but it's just saying like, you know, what are the things that are really important to hit? What are the marks? And, and you know, if you can hit enough of them at a, at a level, then you're going to have success, just like an image. Like you can put too many objects, you can use too many colors, um, you, can, you can have too many highlights. But if you get them all right, then you end up with a successful piece, no matter what the subject of that, that image is. But um, yeah. I'm keeping you here really long. Let's go ahead and jump straight in. Um, Scott, I'm going to abuse you. There's a question. I would like to hear more about how he's using curves. Scott, we're going to kick you out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> you're, you're getting you're getting like wisdom beyond your years here. And maybe you know this stuff, but you know, <laughs> like, for you guys that are tuning in, hopefully, you know, I want to give you the opportunity to learn about technique. I want to give you the opportunity to you know, see how this artist is getting where they're at. But I also just want you guys to appreciate these guys donating time and just, just look at them at a deeper level. Don't, don't look at these guys as far as, and I'm joking, Scott, completely. Love you, man. <laughs> Scott's 50, I'm 51. And so, <laughs> you know what, it's, speaking of curves, I, I would say yeah. that because I, I do get a lot of questions about curves, not a lot, but <laughs> whenever I bring it up, people, people are generally, generally uh, curious about it. Oh because, yeah, uh, we want to uh, steal your thunder. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but, but I, I see a lot of I, I rarely see an artist these days who use curves as a as a way of uh, um, lighting or uh, and and, um, and coloring uh, a painting. Um, and I, I I do find that fascinating because I use it almost exclusively, uh, with the exception of of, of uh, you know actually going in and and, and adding layers, uh, painting in color uh, using you know brushes and stuff, but uh, overall, I use a, a shit ton of curves to 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 color an image. And I, the way I learned it was uh, Dylan Cole's first uh, DVD. That, that yeah. it's 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 as so, simple uh, as that. From, yeah, for, for, from that from that day, um, I switched to 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 curves, and I never looked back. Uh, and and it's amazing how how easy and intuitive that is once you get into it. So uh, I don't know if it should be promoting. Uh, Dylan Cole's first uh, tutorial he ever did. I'm, I'm sure he wouldn't mind, uh, uh, or I, I'm sure he <laughs> would rather 
uh, I'd not bring that up because the painting itself maybe isn't his best work, uh, but he was doing this matte painting. And, and um, if not, then I don't know if I have one of my old, or if you have one of my old classes recorded uh, where I show it, but um, it's, it's fairly intuitive. So um, maybe it's, uh, maybe there's some tutorial on YouTube or something, but uh, definitely check it out. Curves, man. It's good. Travis, are you there? Or Sorry. Um, I was getting to say, anyone that wants to check that out, it's on the old Noman workshop. So you can, you can still get it. And Scott says thanks. So that's the other thing, Scott. Never be afraid to raise your hand and ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> so we're beating up on Scott. And like I said, Scott, hopefully you realize, uh, you know, we're just giving you a hard time. Um, you know, even, even these days, the brush question is not as bad as people make it because, you know, we as artists always, uh, all of us make fun and be like, don't ask what the brush you use is. And then, you know, an amazing artist like John Park comes along and is like, check out my DVD on my brush technique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? you're not and helping you us, John. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you can't, you know, you can't deny that, that John's amazing. So it's like, yeah, like you just took us backwards 10 years with the information we're trying to give him, but you took us ahead 10 years with, with your technique because you do beautiful paintings. Um, but <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, let's get you out of here. Let's uh, let's go through two or three images here. Um, you can see my screen right now, correct? Yes. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna kind of browse through here, and um, you know, we'll we'll try to do three. If we've only got time for two, we can do two. Um, but you just mm -hmm. kind of tell me if there's something that pops out to you, and we can talk about you know what we feel is successful in image, and then if there's anything that you might be able to contribute to say, hey. You know, this is something you might want to think about or something you might want to try with your imagery to get you to that next step. And then also, mm -hmm. also how relevant is it to a portfolio um, for someone doing what you do or someone doing something in production? You know, what is it what is it showing to the client, so to speak? Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to scroll down and then I'll scroll back up and then it's probably a little bit of a delay, I imagine. And I will just click on some and open some too. Well, are, are you just picking something at random here or, or are these yeah. all submitted for, for critique or? No, we, we don't have any submissions for critique. So what this is, Pro Select is basically just going through the gallery and taking a look at artists that have uploaded stuff. Oh, and right, so, right, right. You know, it, it's really just jumping in here and, and take a look at what people have done and, you know. Mm -hmm. And random acts of kindness, so to speak. So if you see something in a thumbnail and like click that and let me know. Right. It all looks pretty cool from what I can see. Uh, There's Raja. We'll take a look at his if you want. Uh, yeah, just feel free to open it. Uh, I mean, it's uh, there's a lot of character stuff in there, obviously, and uh, I feel like I'm not there. No, this guy. That I'm not going to comment on, but... Um, so preferably some, if you have some, oh, that's cool. This one here or the previous one? Well, uh, oh Jesus, uh, well all three of them. Uh, I just saw three images uh, popping up and there's a fourth one. That's okay, beautiful. So we're, on, we're on about a three second delay. So you just tell me a color and. <laughs> <laughs> Right now I'm looking at a, a mountain with a uh, beast. Is that the one? Yes, see? yes, that's the one I'm seeing, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's, let's, do you want to take a pass at this one or you want to go to a different one? Well, I don't I don't really know what I would comment on on this one. I think that one looks great. Um, now we're at a junkyard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's cool. Um, I would maybe pop in some more foreground uh, that would be my my uh, big thing or my only thing for this one really okay. um, let's take a look at a few more then yes that one's a little low res um, this one here's Rajas so got some foreground on it so do you have anything to say about this one uh yeah it looks good um 
Let me see. Um... It's pretty. It's a pretty busy image. So it's really well done. Roger, this is going to give yeah. You yeah it's really nice i think um with with my obsession for for um compositions i would i feel like i want to see like i want to have um a, a, a character in the foreground like a, a a more prominent character in the in the foreground or or a, an object but on the other hand that that's that's a more classic sort of concept art composition that I have in my head. This right. reads more like a. I mean, you could look at it from more of a like a Renaissance type of a. It almost reminds me of uh, I don't know what the style is called, but yeah, it's it's got that that nice old timey painterly feel to it. Um, that is, so it kind of it, it works as it is, but um, one of the things yeah. that I picked up from both you and, and James um, James Klein um, mm -hmm. that I'm now obsessive with composition wise is like I look at this and I, uh, Raja, if you I think you're here, um, I'm really proud of of you developing over the past two years with all the classes you've taken and stuff. But I would say if I was to give any credit, it would not necessarily be that there's anything wrong with this, but the same thing as you said is that from being around you and James, I've learned to really appreciate pushing in and being a little bit more claustrophobic with environments. That's a little bit more challenging to do outside, but you know, getting us up close to the user. And I would say the only thing with this is that I've got this line that's kind of going straight across the bottom here, right? And then yeah. it's putting all the people within that line. So doing, as you said, sticking a large figure up front or introducing us to a character up front and, and pushing us into the scene a little bit more, um, I think has a lot of value, whether it's showing the expression on a character's face, whether yeah. that's just to define the, the period piece more. And again, that's not to say that that's wrong in this image, it just changes it to a different image. And I think if I was to look at this piece, that would be something that I'd wanna see. It's just push me in a little bit more, bring one of these characters to life. It's really awesome that you've got the characters alive here and in the scene, but right now you're kind of just cutting off a horizon line right here. Um, and then that's repetitive. So you end up with all these parallel lines and you know, it, it is fighting, pulling us into the image closer. And that may be the purpose. So. Yeah. And it, it also depends on what, what you want to accomplish with your painting. Right. Like if, if the main purpose of this is to just uh, give us a look of this backdrop and and where we at where we are at uh, if this were a, a, a production painting for example then then this is this is more than than uh, fine for that uh, but if you are approaching it from a more personal art uh, you know uh, storytelling kind of a uh, standpoint then I would yes absolutely strongly suggest having something that pulls me into the to the frame uh, like like Travis just said. Um, uh, and that I initially pointed out a character uh, in the foreground, or maybe you know that that horse and, and carriage, if that was lined up in a more three-quarter type of a uh, angle, seen from the back. So it's yeah. yeah so it's so angle. it's exactly. So it's uh, so it's it's uh, um, it's that they're sort of uh, riding into the scene. So we as as the viewer are pulled in uh in 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 this scene and we, we can feel the depth uh, we can feel the sea depth um a little bit more um and have some kind of a storytelling uh, or a narrative um element to it um or or that rather that something that brings out the narrative a little more um that would be um that would be fantastic or it could be as simple as having two characters in the foreground exchanging something uh, you know, between one another. Um, just, I mean, look at uh, um, Simon Stolenhag. It's a Swedish name. I'm sure you're all aware of him. Um, he's really good at at telling you a story with a with a single um, within a single frame. And I think that makes for a really interesting. Uh, it makes for or it gives the viewer a reason to come back and, and to spend a, a few extra seconds um, studying uh, the scene that you worked so hard to 
set up um, and to paint. So um, I strongly suggest um, bringing in those story elements, and, and because they are more important than you would think, not not only for personal uh, art purposes, but also in production. I mean, there are uh, numerous times on, especially Star Wars, where the the uh, emotion that a uh, keyframe that I'm doing evokes is more important than um, exactly what we're seeing in that set that we're designing. So sometimes a black and white sketch of uh, two characters interacting or or doing something is is more important. Um, than than uh, than the actual design assignment. So don't underestimate it, uh, and um, yeah, just just keep that uh, in the back of your head uh, as you're yeah. as you're doing your pieces. I, I love in some of James' pieces where the characters are the bare minimum <laughs> for what they need to be. Like, right. like he can beat the hell out of it if he wants, but like it's literally like an octagon head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, like, and sometimes that helps push the story because it takes attention away from the character. My only other comment to Raja on this would just be, you know, he's got a, a done a really good job of contrast here. And I would just simply say on the edge work um, that, you know, you're still going to be able to see everything even with the contrast, but on the edge work, especially on more kind of hand built brick and, you know, age cities and stuff just try to go in on these edges all over the place here and just add some kind of, you know, discrepancies, right? Whether that's some little nicks or, you know, showing me that it's built a little bit more brick and you wouldn't see that from far away. But if you just throw in some discrepancy in those straight lines there, um, you know, especially in areas where there's high contrast, um, I think that will give you a, a good opportunity of making these things, you know, pop a little. And, and again, it just, it goes back to that comment we just made, like, how you know is this supposed to be a map painting right like this is if this is a concept piece this is more work than you would need to do period so all my comments are complete shit. um mm -hmm. so it just depends on you know if this is in your portfolio is this a conceptual piece are you showing me this is a conceptual piece if it's a conceptual piece what are you trying to establish what are you trying to say is it you know, as we're talking about diagonal this put two characters up front having a conversation maybe looking at a paper and you know plotting because they got some look on their face like is it a story beat is it a keyframe like just just start thinking about from that point of view I, I think if I'm not mistaken this was probably for um is this for a class yes so this is a piece I did for mentorship uh, brief design morning Victorian era so that's the other mm -hmm. thing is you know hopefully you take this and you take what you learned from class and then go redo that with your own story element that tells us a little bit something deeper, even though I'm being extraordinarily nitpicky with it. Um, let's go to one more image. Uh, do you want to take a pass at this? Because you've done some ship stuff and you've done some interiors. Um, or do you want to keep going through a few more of these? Uh, uh... Uh, yeah, no, it's that that looks uh, good. Um, sorry, I'm I'm trying to think while I'm um, while I'm talking, and that's not a big. I'm just gonna keep popping through, and you tell me which one to go back to, and then we'll get you out of here, man. Thank you for. Right. Um, well, if you go back to the, the there was a corridor piece. Uh, one. Th that one, yeah, I like this one. Um, I like this sort of uh, suggestive. Um, that's great. Uh, lighting and the character there. Yeah. It's the same thing with this one. I would just, um, I would give it more purpose. Like I would give that, that, that little silhouetted figure there, I would give him more of a purpose. Uh, like what's he doing? Like, like right now he's not really, I don't understand really what he's doing. Uh, it seems like he's taken, taken a step. To, to camera right, um, and I would rather would rather see more clearly what he's doing. Um, I'm a big sucker for torches and I like uh, flashlights. Um, maybe he's holding a flashlight, or maybe he's got something in his hands that he's doing, or maybe again, maybe there's a second character here, and they're 
talking to each other or just something that that makes me look at the painting and and wonder what it, the hell is going on um yeah it could it could be that it's a great missed opportunity to put a second character here in the foreground again just introducing us like you said and you know when you go back to like the old sid mead paintings you know those characters are always changing attire or filling up gas or they're like yeah. in the middle of doing something you yes, know this i love piece, that yeah and this is a piece here where you know that's not bad but you know overlapping is your friend so you know if you're going to have that that close like just drop it behind him right and uh I agree. Give him a flashlight. Give him something to do. And a flashlight also gives you this opportunity to, you know, you know, play with a light source. Um, but, yeah. but, you know, this piece is just dying. And, and you know, it may not be the intention. Like, we don't know the story element here. But, um, you know, to me, as soon as you put a second character in here with an occupation, with a function, it goes from concept 101 to concept 102. Right. Because, you know, yeah. it, Every, every time we see an environment that has a character for scale, we're happy that that character is there for scale, but it also just feels like a homework assignment. And, you know, it's, it's all, all it's doing is, is giving a scale. And if you can take advantage of your time by dropping that character in and giving him a function and giving him a story beat, then you move it from concept 101 to concept 102, so to speak. So I, I agree yeah. with you 100%. Yeah, because everything else is working really well. I like the values. I like awesome. the uh, yeah, the composition is is really good. I the, the lighting is fantastic. I I, I if it, if it was me, I would um, I would put something in the foreground uh, in that big empty space that were where the, where the camera is at, so to speak. And I would put something there that this guy is investigating uh, or is about to investigate. So he's approaching. Um, maybe he's just come around the corner and he's shining his flashlight towards whatever is uh, sat there in the water. And then I would probably flip it, uh, or at least try to flip it and see if that if that works better. So the eye sort of um, is is um, following his, um, disc you know, we're we're picking up him first and then we're noticing whatever it is that he's there to investigate that might not work uh but i'm just um i'm just saying I, that 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 could be a a, a good um uh, i like good it because he's done the work of getting the silhouette to the point where it looks like we've got a line of sight but then when we've got that line of sight there's not really a point of interest there that much to me like even right. if it was a decaying astronaut suit that's like pinned to the ceiling somehow and makes yeah. us be like what the hell's going on? Like you said, he's investigating it, like, or maybe there's a growth on the ceiling and it's, you know, tied into that corner, but this is yeah. really powerful. And, and this is a, a composition tool that I think artists can take much stronger advantage of is that invisible line, being able to point that character in a direction where you want to force them to look. And if you've done that just either by accident or by choice, once you do that, then there's the necessity to do something with it because that becomes one of the strongest elements in the picture. So I'd love to see, let's see him take advantage too. So anybody that's watching, when you guys hear these critiques, you know, I do save these images out to the forum. We, you know, record these videos and, you know, put them out. Um, if you're the artist behind these images, you know, we like your work enough, you know, obviously to pick it out. So hopefully you're taking these as constructive criticism, understanding we really appreciate your art. And uh, the only job that we're doing here is not to break you down, but rather to hopefully give you um, some insight that might help you on your next piece, or even if you want to go back and revisit a piece. It's it's often hard to revisit a piece. But if you want to revisit a piece and repost it, we'd love to see that, and we will highlight that on our front page. And if you want to jump in and take the opportunity to give another artist a critique and pass that on yourself, um, we're here to do that. Uh, Andre, thank you so much for the time. Uh, Christo linked a piece here, but unfortunately, we've got to get you out of here because you know we were supposed to get you out of here 12.15 to 12.30. So Christo, maybe if you post it up on CG Society later, um, we can take the opportunity to have Andre give you some tips there. Um, yeah. you know, thank you guys so much for stopping in. Andre, incredible of you to give me the time as usual, man. I miss you. I can't wait till you're back in LA. Um, and uh, I'm hoping to you know get you on in another week or two so we can discuss your short film, um, the state, as well as the project that you recently directed, and just go over your skills there. I think you're a brilliant individual, and so I think that needs to be shared with people, and, and thanks for for taking the time to share that. I know that you're a pretty humble guy. 
Um, so, you know, look for the date for that on the CG Society Meetup Facebook page, or you can also look for it in the Pro Select Forum on CG Society. Um, don't forget to check out CGMA's demo reel classes that go live next week. Is there anything that you wanted to plug, Andre? Anything that you've got out there right now that you'd like to share with people? Um, do you have a link to the state so that they could check that out? Is there somewhere where that can be viewed? Um, well, yeah, I, uh, if you want to, well, th thank you for, first of all, for the nice compliment and, uh, for having me, uh, it's, it's always a pleasure. Um, if you want to, I guess the latest thing you, you could check out is the, um, uh, the Walking Dead trailers, uh, or the, the Walking Dead trailer that I directed, uh, I, I, well, I directed two of them, uh, and they're on YouTube, both of them. So if you just type in. Walking, Walking Dead game trailer. You'll, you'll find them both. They're, they're called Aiden and Maya, uh, for two upcoming characters for for the for the new Walking Dead game. So if you want to check those out, um, I'd that'd play be cool. it here, but it probably won't play smoothly. But yeah, if you guys type in Walking Dead game trailer, then here you go. And uh, great yeah. job on that, man. Um, so Thank let's. You. Let's get together and, uh, like I said, let me know what your schedule is like in the next week or two, and we'll find a spot to get you in and uh, yeah. go over what it is that you're doing there as well. And then, you know, again, don't you know the state's uh, a few years old at this point, but you know one of the coolest pitches I've seen, and uh, you know it's cool to see somebody at your level take it to production level that you got without a big budget. So um, awesome work.